Okay. Hi, my name is Alicia Thomas. Um, I um, am here to talk about the machinery of data competition. So this is an annual competition that uh, the South Australian government runs, um, and it is to um, inspire people to use open data in new and interesting ways. So I actually work for the South Australian government um, in the Office of Digital Government. So my day job is to convince the government that they should be releasing their information. This is somewhat a challenging job at times, as you can understand. And uh, so what I tend to do is I, uh, we create lots of wonderful activities where we actually get amazing people like you in this room to show the government how valuable it is to release this information. So uh, to do that, um, we, of course, we have a data portal where you can discover information. It's called data.sa. Um, and uh, we encourage people to come along and use that information in different ways. So uh, one of the things that I do is I, I lead an action plan to advance um, open data and that has a whole heap of activities. So one of those activities is um, Unleash the Open Data Competition, um, you might have heard of, um, I'll talk a bit later. Um, and also the Machinery of Data Competition is one of those activities. Most of it is government law, um, but uh, get to do some fun things like these competitions. So data.sa, the South Australian Government Data Directory, um, is available online. This is what it looks like. Um, and you can come here and you can find and search for different information and different data um, and, um, and reuse it. It's all licensed for reuse, which means you can use it for commercial purposes or in new and interesting ways. You can also request a data set. So if there's something you're interested in working on and you think, wow, it would be great if I could get this, then you can send us a request and tell us what you would like to use it for um, and we might be able to, no, no guarantees of course, <laughs> um, we might be able to try find that information. From this website you can also search for federal government data and we're also working on some partnerships with other jurisdictions so that you can come to our portal and not just find South Australian data but you might be able to find comparable data across all the different jurisdictions. So maybe you're looking for health stats for South Australia. You could also find some for New South Wales and, and Western Australia and, and so on. So there's no wrong door entry. That's, that's the end game anyway. So um, I thought I'd give a little bit of an example if you don't know what I'm talking about when we talk about data. And this, I always give this example to government executives because <laughs> it's the most simplest one. So um, we have a data set called uh, Popular Baby Name. And uh, the amazing thing about this is you can see the little fire next to, um, next to the most popular, it's actually one of our most popular data sets and the mind just boggles. And so when we first went to our Attorney General's department and said, just release the baby names off, why would anyone want that? And in actual fact, it's been our most popular data set and, um, and we've actually had uh, lots of people create different things, including this was a, um, a visualisation that someone has created and you can, the live version, you can slide across and it will tell you the different year, what is the most popular baby name. Um, and the really amazing, funny thing is, is David is the most popular, David, Andrew and Michael are the most popular name in Adelaide forever. It doesn't matter what year you go to, it is always the most popular and my partner's name is David, so there you go. <laughs> so last year we ran the Machinery of Data competition for the first time um, and we got some really great um, examples. So um, the first one we have uh, is called Talking Heads and these, um, these entries read out old newspaper history. So they read out the news and that we put them in the state library and it helped people engage with old historical newspapers in a new and different way. Um, we also had um, this, um, bo the, the bottom one, this, this artsy looking one, it was, is actually um, uh, population rates and someone did a, an artistic demonstration because what we know from data is, you know, most people hear the word data and their eyes glaze over and then they go a bit boring and they're like, oh, switch off. 
And so this um, uh, one was to look at, try and engage people in a, a new and different way, make it a bit more beautiful, because data is beautiful. <laughs> Um, and so our winning entry last year was called Next Bus, and this entry uh, told us it used real-time Adelaide Metro data and it displayed in a digital format what time the next bus was. And I mean, this is of course hugely beneficial if you are waiting at the bus stop or maybe then you're at the coffee shop and you want to know when's the next bus, do I have time for coffee? Can I run in or should I actually wait for the bus stop. And so this was our winning entry last year for the Machine Area Data Competition. So it, it was quite cool. And so the um, drawing that you can see for the next bus was done by a five-year-old. And so it was fantastic to see um, the, the dad was getting his daughter involved in creating it and we thought that was, that was pretty cool too. So um, this year we have the Machine Area Data Competition again, and so we've given people about three, uh, two, about two or three months to create their entry. And we basically we just say, look, here's the data, we want you to make something. Be creative, use the information in new and innovative ways. And then we have a $1,000 prize, and it's best in show. So we had some people in here this morning, and they were judging their entries. And so, um, and uh, I'm here to talk about who the winner is. And um, the winner is for this year's competition. And you can see the entries, which is in the TAFE hall, which is at the very furthest hall possible. And um, I actually have busted my knee today. And I was delighted when I arrived and found out that the speaker hall was here and the mod was right down the other end. That was wonderful. But we really encourage you to go and uh, check out the, the makers who have made um, are actually here. Um, and they should be able to talk to you about their creation and how they've used open data to actually um, create their entries. Um, and so we had an entry that was um, uh, looking at um, in the environment factors and so that you could ride around on your bike and, and discover, um, find out like what the environment and um, the air quality was at the time. Um, and we also had another entry that was looking at what the UV ratings were. And so you could actually, you, you might be at a uh, something like today, uh, where you're at a, um, uh, at a an event, and you can find out what the UV, you can use this device to find out what today's current UV rating is. Um, to um, see whether you should slip, slop, slap, and we think that's quite valuable. And the winner that we did have today is Pan Galactic Fusion Canaries with their project Common UV, which is the, the entry I just spoke. And I would like to invite um, the team up to collect a certificate and an award that I have. So if you want to come up. All right, so we had um, the whole point was, okay, it collects UV ratings now, but it's to raise community or maintain community awareness about UV and skin cancer and that. And so there was um, data sets on data desk, data.sa, which had cancer statistics from the several years going back from 2010 to 2014. So the, we don't have a photo of it, but it's down there. The idea is to have a device that would attract people's attention, like particularly say children at a football match or in summer it'd be a cricket match or whatever and they press the button and it would say I'm um, flash a few LEDs to get their attention and say I'm going to tell you how, how dangerous it is at the moment and then it would say it'd pick a day at random from three years ago and say in this year there were this many cancer cases but in 1977 there were this many and so it's gotten more dangerous um, and we also had a, some other, and what's the other data set? Oh yeah, and then it would tell you where at Tonsley, so it would know the location of the nearest GP centre and say so you've got to go to Marion. <laughs> and um, we wanted to use some other data, so here's, here's a request. So there's a website with um, all the UV ratings for any day of the year going back about 12 years and would have loved to have sucked that in, but it was ambiguous on the website, so mm -hmm. we decided to just leave that out. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, it's a good, yeah. good example to show back to those people. And you got to talk because your voice is in the thing anyway. <laughs> Zachary's been hearing his voice all day sitting next to this because we have the computer speak all this stuff. So, and thank you. There is. Thank you very much.
why we love this eye concept as well is because it was a father-son team as well. Um, both um, Zach and Andrew have competed in our Unleashed Open Data competitions before and Zach has won a participation, well both of you actually, have won our Spirit Prizes. Because they come along and they compete and they, and they give it a go and we think it's just fantastic. I think this is your third competition you've been involved in now with us. So yeah, so yes, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, uh, so I, I would like to say a thank you to um, this uh, character, John Ruchak. Um, I'm looking at him strangely in this photo because he's normally causing me trouble. Um, <laughs> um, but I, he's not here at the moment, but he has helped organise all of this. I'd also like to thank the Mini Maker Fair and Hackerspace. Uh, Hackerspace are always um, more than helpful. We had some people who were like, oh, we want to create something, we don't know what to do. And I don't know what to do either. And so I'm like, go oh, see these amazing people at Hackerspace, they will help you. Um, and so I always just want to give them a bit of a plug. Um, one of the things that I also want to talk about is Unleash the Open Data Competition. And so this competition, if you haven't heard about it, is where we get a bunch of innovative, cool people in a room for 46 hours and see what cool stuff they can do with our data. But, um, this year we had over 200 people compete in the competition uh, across four different locations. And I think we had 35 different projects created in 46 hours. And it is just amazing, it's mind-boggling to go and just see people's ideas that take something that you might think is some boring data and change it and, and mash it in with something else and, and use it in new and creative ways. It, it's a fantastic experience and just eye-opening to see what amazing talent we actually have in, in, in Adelaide, South Australia. So it's pretty cool. So if you are interested in dabbling in this sort of space, keep an eye out for um, 2016. We will run an Unleashed competition again. Hopefully it's not me running it. But, um, <laughs> Um, but we will uh, run another competition and we'll probably run MOD again as well next year because it has been fantastic. Uh, we also run a youth version of the competition called Next Gen Unleashed and we hold them at public libraries uh, and we get 13 to 18 year olds to come and I think we'll probably even make it like just up to 18 next year because we had um, an 8 year old at Unleashed this year so which was pretty cool. Um, and so we will... Um, we will um, hold uh, another next gen uh, so that even if you're, um, if you're new to this space and, and you're a youth, you can come along and dabble. So. If you are interested in finding out more information, then um, we have a Twitter, a Facebook page, and um, also um, uh, we've got the data.sa website and email. You can reach me there if you're interested in anything to do with this. And that is it. Does anyone have any questions? Good. Thank <laughs> you.